I'm happy to uh, kick off this reinforcement learning session with our work on hierarchical imitation and reinforcement learning. This is joint work with uh, my co-authors from uh, Microsoft Research in New York, Nan Jiang, Alec Agarwal, Miro Dudik, and Hao Dome, and also my advisor at Caltech, Professor Yi Song Yue. My name is Huang Lei, and uh, I'm a PhD uh, candidate at Caltech. So, to start off, it is perhaps well known that many popular reinforcement learning methods have a tough time learning certain tasks, especially those with long horizon and sparse rewards. A prime example of this is the Atari game Montezuma's Revenge, uh, and a one-sentence summary of why this task is challenging is that the learner has to explore too many moves before any positive reward can be attained. And so one possible way to overcome this challenge is to learn from expert feedback, which is also known as imitation learning. So what happened typically in imitation learning is that the teacher would guide the learner by giving demonstrations or, uh, of how to do the task, or giving feedback in terms of optimal actions to improve the learner's current behavior. And in either case, the teacher feedback typically comes in the form of optimal or near-optimal uh, action labels, which reduce the need to explore versus reinforcement learning. But the trade-off here is that the teacher's feedback can be costly to obtain. So we can think of cost generally as the amount of effort that it takes for human to teach the learner, which ideally should be small. And so the central question that we go after in this paper is, how can we most effectively leverage the teacher's feedback to learn sequential decision-making policy? And one place that we could look into to reduce the cost for the teacher is perhaps other types of feedback that might be more natural for the teacher to specify. First, we can start with the observation that often human uh, naturally give high level feedback with a hierarchical structure built in. For example, in this uh, toy picture, when showing someone how to get to the restroom, we typically provide directions based on landmarks instead of giving step-by-step -step instruction. And another natural mode of feedback is to verify, or I would call it lazier feedback, for instance. Uh, verifying whether learner has done a good job or a bad job is presumably easier than showing how to do the task itself. So in our work, we are going to incorporate this intuition into some hierarchical algorithms for imitation and reinforcement learning. In particular, we'll first describe a hierarchical imitation learning algorithm where the teacher provides mostly high-level feedback by default and only zoom into the low level when necessary. This would, give us, this would give us both savings in teaching effort and perhaps less intuitively, this would in fact also result in faster learning as well. And then we're gonna describe uh, a hybrid imitation and reinforcement algorithm where teacher provides only high level feedback and the learner use standard reinforcement learning at the low level. This would also speed up learning compared to standard hierarchical reinforcement learning. And we'll walk through more details, but first let me take a step back and talk more about flat imitation learning setting. So let's start with a maze navigation domain. Here, the learner, which is the white dot, has to find its way to the target in yellow. The learner should avoid the lava, which are the red squares here. Uh, and the environment can be viewed as a four by four uh, room structure. Um, the action, the basic action that the learner can take is to take one step uh, to go either up, down, left, or right. And we can create thousands of environments like this, right? With the requirement that each one is designed so that the shortest path from start to finish would be about 50 time steps. So it's challenging for reinforcement learning. And so we aim to find a policy that maps state to actions that generalize to unseen environments. And here the states are the pixel representations of the top-down view. So now, a flat imitation learning scheme may work like this. The learner would act according to the current policy, and let's say that the learner stumble around and end up getting stuck in one of the room. The teacher would then label each step with the correct actions. So for instance, in one segment in the, in the middle of the path here, the learner was trying to go uh, down into the wrong room, and the teacher would label to go up instead. 
given those locations that the learner would find, uh, find itself in. So one possible way to improve the current policy is that we would aggregate these uh, teacher feedback. And the learning policy can be updated using, for example, stochastic gradient descent on, the, on a multi-class classification problem. And this is essentially the idea behind the DAGGER algorithm, which is among uh, one of the most popular imitation learning algorithm. And there are, of course, other imitation learning ideas. But the point is that in flat imitation learning, the labeling effort would be proportional to the task horizon. And now I'm going to describe a method which hopefully can do better than this. Um, and let's use the same environment to describe our hierarchical imitation learning setup. First, it's pretty easy to see that our environment has a natural hierarchical structure. Uh, we can formalize this hierarchical structure by introducing uh, macro actions, which are temporally extended actions that the learner can take. For example, in this case, we can consider five macro actions. Um, given the room that the learner is in, the learner can decide to go to either take the door up, the door down, the door to the left, or the door to the right. And also the learner can uh, decide to go for the target if it is in the appropriate room. And we'll aim to learn a hierarchical policy, which is composed of a metacontroller that maps states to macro actions. And a chosen macro action would then trigger a sub-policy, and a sub-policy would map the state to the low-level action. The sub-policy has the same action as before, plus a stop action to turn the control back to the metacontroller. And so to learn efficiently, our key strategy in this work is to be more selective when asking for the teacher feedback at the low level. So first, if the metacontroller chooses the wrong macro action, then no low level feedback is needed. And second, neither do we need low level feedback if the sub policy can execute a correct macro action. And finally, we only ask for low level feedback when the sub policy fails a correct macro action chosen. So these are the principles that are crucial for the improvement over flat imitation learning. So let me go into a little bit more detail about what I, what I mean by these principles. So first of all, after the learner ex, uh, runs its hierarchical policy, at the high level, we receive a sequence of state and uh, macro action pairs, right? And the teacher would first focus on providing macro level uh, labels at the high level trajectory. And at the low level, the teacher would selectively provide labels with the following protocol. One, if the teacher, uh, if the learner's chosen macro action is correct, then the teacher would verify whether or not the low level policy has been carried out successfully. So this takes one verifying feedback. And if the execution is successful, then no low level feedback is further needed other than this verifying feedback. Now, if the macro action is not good, then the only feedback the teacher needs to provide is the correct macro label. No more feedback is needed at this point. And the only instance where low level labeling is needed is when the learner chooses a good macro action, but somehow the low level execution is unsuccessful according to the teacher's verification. And only here, the teacher would zoom in and provide the low-level labels of what the optimal actions should have been taken. So to summarize our algorithm, the teacher would label high-level trajectory with correct macro actions. And another way to put it is that the teacher would find the first mistake and only when it is due to a bad policy, sub-policy, then the teacher would micromanage uh, the corresponding low-level trajectory. And the key insight as to why this strategy may help us is that verifying whether low-level trajectory is successful or not is cheaper than having to give the labels at the low level. And we formalize this insight in a theoretical analysis that essentially says that the teacher's uh, labeling effort is equal to the high-level horizon plus the low-level horizon, which should be only a fraction of the full horizon. And in the best case, where the horizon at both levels are roughly the same, 
then the number of labels would just be square root of the full horizon. So we discuss labeling costs at this point. What about performance of the learning policy? So it turns out that even with less effort from the teacher, we can still expect the performance of the learning policy to hold up because the hierarchical guidance of the teacher allows the policy to be learned uh, only in relevant parts of the state space. So let's take a look at whether this is true in practice. Here's the learning curve of our hierarchical imitation learning algorithm compared to flat imitation learning ones and uh, compared to another hierarchical baseline. The x-axis here shows the number of episodes used for training. One episode would, uh, would be one randomly chosen environment. And the y-axis is the average success rate over previously unseen tasks. Our algorithm is in blue, uh, and we use Dagger to train both the meta controller and the sub-policies. So the, the takeaway here is that our hierarchical imitation learning algorithm is able to achieve almost 100% test success faster than uh, flat imitation learning algorithms, including Dagger and behavior cloning. And in terms of the labeling effort, uh, this chart on the right here shows the same success rate versus number of uh, expert labels needed. Uh, we need only uh, use only a fraction of the, of the expert labels for our hierarchical imitation learning algorithm compared to, uh, to flat dagger. So this empirical result are consistent with the theory and the intuition that we have discussed. So now we're gonna extend the hierarchical guidance idea into the reinforcement learning setting to see whether we can use similar algorithmic framework to achieve faster learning than standard hierarchical reinforcement learning as well. So let's go back to the original example of Montezuma's Revenge. Here's we're aiming to solve the entire first room of the game. And I will describe the game by walking through what the designated macro action would be. Uh, so here's the starting position. First, the learner has to find its way down to the bottom of the right stair. And after that, the learner has to navigate the other, to the other side of the room, avoid the obstacle in the meantime, and then uh, climb up and get to the key. And this is the first instance where some positive reward can be, can be received. And then the learner has to reverse the course, go back to the bottom of the right stair again. And finally, the learner has to navigate back up and find its way to open the door. And this is the second instance that positive reward can be, can be received. And at this point, the first room is considered to be solved. So as before, we'll try to learn a hierarchical policy with uh, meta controllers and sub policy. And the state in this case is a standard pixel representation. And the meta controller would select among the four uh, macro actions. And for this hybrid approach, we're going to learn the meta controller by imitation learning and train the sub policy using standard reinforcement learning. And similar to some previous hierarchical reinforcement learning approaches, I want to point out that we are assuming in this setting that we are given a termination uh, predicate and a pseudo reward function when macro actions are attained. The pseudo reward is simply one in our case. So here's an overview of our hybrid imitation reinforcement learning algorithm. First, we are asking for uh, the teacher feedback only at the high level. And at the low level, using an idea analogous to our hierarchical imitation learning algorithm, we would only pass the low level trajectory to the corresponding sub policy reinforcement learner when the macro actions are correct. And as before, this hierarchical guidance from the teacher ensures that the policy are learned only in the relevant parts of the set space. And let me show you how this plays out in Montezuma's Revenge. So here's an example of, of different learning stages for a random experiment. So the x-axis now shows the total number of high-level labels from a teacher. And the four lines here show the learning progressions at the success rate attain, uh, of attaining each macro actions. And in this example, the number of expert labels required is about 8,000, which can vary from experiment to experiment. And we account for the variation by running 100 different experiments, 
we limit each of them to 4 million reinforcement learning samples. And we use Dagger for imitation learning and double DQN with prioritized experience replay to train the low level reinforcement learners. And in this figure, you can see a comparison of our hybrid algorithm versus uh, hierarchical reinforcement learning. Here's the Y axis is a true reward received from the game. And the blue band here is our result showing the range from first to third quartile. The highlighted red line is uh, our third quartile result out of 100 experiments. And basically the top quartile of the trials managed to solve the room in about 2.2 million low level samples. The green line, which is a bit hard to see here in the bottom, show that after 4 million samples, the standard hierarchical reinforcement learning mostly achieved score of zero, with only a few trials among 100 managed to get to the key, which is the first uh, positive reward. So with this, I want to uh, summarize. Hopefully, I've convinced you the benefit of, the, of using expert guidance in hierarchical learning. Hierarchical imitation learning requires substantially less uh, labels compared to standard imitation learning. And for the scenarios where the low level horizon is short enough that it makes sense to use reinforcement learning at the low level, our hybrid uh, imitation learning reinforcement learning algorithm works well even when hierarchical reinforcement learning fails. And e either of our setting, the unifying, uh, unifying reason for why learning can be faster while using less data is to use a hierarchical guidance framework from the teacher to focus the learning on relevant parts of the state space. So if you're interested to discuss our ideas in more detail, our poster number 15 will be tonight around 6 p.m. Thank you and I'm happy to take questions now.